Um, I, I, we've had this conversation with you guys so many times where you're having to deal with, you know, another roadblock that's kind of thrown in your way. And I don't know how much new ground there is there to talk about, but from maybe just from the, from the inside, as you're a coaching staff trying to keep this all pointed in the right direction, does it get easier? Are there things that, that you're just getting more accustomed to now when it comes to suddenly there's, there's not a game. Can, can you take us a little bit inside what it's like to keep having to deal with this and trying to find ways to be successful? Yeah, Adam, it, it's been, and, and obviously we're not the only ones in the country that have dealt with something like this, but I think the hardest part for us as a staff is it's been hard to get into a rhythm, you know, as a team. And you look at when our felt like we were really starting to play well, when we had our first, um, you know, extended break, there before Christmas and which led to a little bit after Christmas. And clearly it took us some time when we came back from that to get back to where we were before that break. And as we were getting back, getting what felt like we were hitting a rhythm again, then our Nebraska game gets canceled. And then we had that stretch where we didn't play a game. I, I'm, Gary, maybe you remember the specifics. I think it was like nine or nine 10 days. days or, you know, so, and, and now here again, we are, in a similar situation, um, it's it's certainly adversity that we really didn't face last year in, when we thought and tried to anticipate for, for multiple breaks like that, and we were fortunate um, in that regard. But this year, it's it's the hardest part has been getting in a rhythm. Now, I think we have our, our lead, the leaders on our team have helped us practice well during these breaks, which is really, really important, and it can be hard um to to kind of maintain that level of practice especially in january and february when you're used to playing games every two or three days um so so yeah give them credit for you know helping us have a good practice yesterday and and you know even before leading into iowa felt like we were really prepared for that game uh but it's been unique and just trying to get a rhythm hopefully we're we'll we won't have any more issues to where we can be in a great rhythm here down the stretch of the season and when you talk about um, just dealing with adversity and having to change plans like that, I, when we talked to Coach Holtman the other day, he was saying how coming into the season, he's, uh, he's talking about Jamari, but he's saying, you know, you, you guys thought you were going to have Jamari in a backcourt with Dwayne and Justice and like those three kind of all together. And obviously having to have a lot of conversations leading up to the season when you realize Justice might not be able to go. What were those conversations like when, when you kind of go through a whole offseason with a plan and then the last couple of weeks, it's like, OK, well, we know. I don't know if it's back to the drawing board, but you got to make some significant uh, adjustments. Yeah, we, we've it's been really fluid for us, right? All season, Nietzsche missed some time. Obviously, Jamari missed a game, and you can go down with justice situation. Coaches talked a lot about. Um, certainly, you know, part of your job as as a staff is you build, you you plan, and you build for what you anticipate your roster to look like. But you have to anticipate every year, also there being injuries and, and guys missing games. We've unfortunately had more than we ever would have imagined uh, going into the season. And justice was certainly, you know, a huge, huge part of our plans this off season and, and leading into the season. And, and with Dwayne, you know, this off season was unique because everything was pushed back. Uh, the decision date was pushed back a month. And so Dwayne was one of those guys right on the cusp of, you know, should he stay? Should he should he go? It was it was right there all the way to the very end. Um, so those certainly were challenging. But, you know, I think we've again, we've kind of started to get a start. We've started to get at least from a lineup standpoint, I think some some consistency as we've getting, gotten everybody, you know, who's played this year back to being healthy, obviously justice being the exception there. But um, but yeah, it's it's been a challenge. But Got to adjust. That's one thing I think Holt does an unbelievable job with. He, he's able to adjust on the fly, you know, at, at such an elite level. Uh, so he's, I think he's helped us as a program manage it uh, pretty well. All right, we'll go with Patrick Murphy and Colin Gay on that. Patrick. Hey, Jake, thanks for talking with us. Uh, I'm curious just when Jamari is missing time or even when he came back against Purdue wasn't 100% yet, as a defensive coordinator, so to speak, how does that change your approach with him kind of being the, the tip of the iceberg, so to speak, on the defensive end of the court? Yeah, Patrick, it certainly in, in, impacts us on that side of the ball. Um, his ability to put pressure on the ball and to build 
build around that defensively is important. And we, we've had some games and, and certainly, you know, our, we're not built from a roster standpoint to be a high steel team or high turnover forcing team. He's the best one we have at that. So when you take that out too, now you're, you're, you're taking away two, maybe two or three more possessions where you get to get an advantage on offense then too. And, and so him being out um, presented challenges for sure. And as he works his way back to 100%, um, hopefully we're, we're hoping he's getting closer and closer to that every day. But his impact on the ball and how that allows us to play behind him is, is really, really important for us defensively. And I think, you know, Michi, I think, has, has begun to get better and better at that, being able to pressure the ball with his speed and athleticism. And, and we need some other guys to continue to grow in that area. Uh, Cedric has to grow in that area. Malachi has to grow in that area. Uh, Eugene Brown has helped, you know, with his length and athleticism on the ball some. So Jamari, though, by far our best, you know, on ball pressure defender and, and has been able to create some steals for us, which we certainly lack with him with him not in there. And you kind of led into my follow up, but how has he been able to be an example to some of those guys you just mentioned that will need to develop that as you go forward uh, once Jamari's gone? Obviously, you guys didn't know you were going to have him until he transfers, but I imagine that's been a, a positive even when he's not on the court. Yeah, we we felt like when he hit the portal and and we we obviously called him right away and because we we're so familiar with him and and we anticipated him impacting our guys in practice at a high level, and I think he's even exceeded that to some degree. His competitiveness. You, you know, and, and you can imagine, right, it's one thing to go against them a couple times a year, but you get to go against a defender like that every single day in practice. It's it's helped our guys offensively, but it's also helped set a tone for us defensively on, you know, hey, this is what it looks like. This is what you have to build build towards. So he's exceeded our expectations as far as being influential on that side of the ball in practice. Um, and it's been really valuable, I think, for our younger guys. Colin Day and Clay Hall on deck. Colin. Hey, Jake. I was cur curious. Um, so when, you, when you're talking about rhythm, when it comes to kind of the off and on, the start and the stop, I'm, and, and everybody takes it differently. Everybody has different experiences with it. But I'm curious, is do, do you find it harder for guys, maybe veterans who know kind of the routine of college basketball and have been there before? Or is it kind of harder on the younger guys trying to get an idea of, OK, this is what it's like? It, it, is it just different there or is it harder on one or the other, you would say? What would, uh, how would you respond? Colin, that's a, that's a that's a good, interesting perspective, because I think certainly you take a guy like Kyle Young, who's been through, you know, now his fifth year of Big Ten basketball, and there is a cadence to January and February that he's used to. And so it can certainly affect experience, I guess, doesn't necessarily exclude you from, you know, handling this adversity in a, in a, with the breaking up of the rhythm in a difficult way. So he, he's a great example of these breaks, you know, could, has, have certainly, you know, impacted him maybe not in the same way it's impacted a, a, a freshman or a sophomore, but it, our veterans, they're not used to this either. And there's a frustration to it, you know, that they have to safeguard from and, and we've relied on them to help, you know, their maturity to help us handle these breaks appropriately. And they've been really good, but I'm sure if you asked any of those guys, there, there's certainly a frustration to it. Obviously we're in unique times right now, last season and, and this season still, but um, it's it, the experience part doesn't necessarily, I think it's a great point you brought up. It doesn't necessarily just, it's not fair to assume that it's made easier for them because they're experienced. And I'm curious uh, with the change, obviously Iowa brings a little bit of different, uh, brought a little bit of a different kind of style, especially defensively that you guys were preparing for. I mean, how, hard is it or how difficult is it to kind of you know you you, you spend a couple of days preparing for this certain look and then on a moment's notice it gets canceled and then immediately on to the next one knowing that you could see Iowa again or are expecting to see Iowa again um what what about like what did that look like for the coaching staff what did that look like in terms of game planning like on a moment's notice straight to Maryland 
Colin, I don't, I don't think it was a huge, a huge difference. I think we're used to this, this time of the season, turning the page quickly. Um, you know, I think the, the value of playing in that game and, and hopefully, you know, being able be obviously being able to play at home, you know, and we've already been cheated a couple of games of the, those this year felt bad for our guys missing that. And, and I, and again, I felt like we had prepared well and our guys were ready uh, for that game. So there was a, there's a mental side of turning that page, you know, that, that typically after a game, we're watching film on that game, growing from it, learning from it. So we didn't, we didn't have that. We didn't grow from that experience. We had to move on. And that was the difference probably where, you know, we just kind of had to forget about Iowa, quite honestly, for the time being. And certainly we're, I think the league's going to reschedule that game, but we, uh, guys are used to turning the page quick in this league, this league, every game is so challenging. You can't, you can't spend too much time on the game before anyway, just because it doesn't matter who you play every night. It's, it's a challenge. Go play hall and see how I can play. Hey Jake, uh, you guys are in a good spot. I mean, you're in a position to do a lot of things uh, this season. What do you think, uh, what facet of your game has to improve if you're going to go where you want to go? Clay, I think it starts on the defensive end for us. We, we have to be more consistent and more consistent throughout the course of a game. We'll, we'll have really good stretches at times, um, which is encouraging because it shows what we're capable of. But we have to have consistency, I think, on that side of the ball, first and foremost. And, and it's an attention to detail thing at times, but it also is sustaining the necessary physicality and and um you know effort and, and things like it requires a lot in this league you, you look at some of the obviously Purdue really high rated offense Iowa would have been another really high rated offense we're certainly one of the best offenses in the country so our, our consistency on that side has to be better I think first and foremost and you know we um and, and ultimately this time of year your best players got to be your best players I think that's I think that's important on both sides of the ball, your best players got to be your best players. And, you know, that's EJ, I think, first and foremost, he can help set a tone both offensively and defensively for us. And, and he's equipped for it. I think he's earned the right to, mm -hmm. you know, he's worked hard and earned this right for us to count on him like that. And so it's exciting, you know, that, that we got a player like that going into every game, you know, for sure. And, but, as he is more consistent on the defensive side, I think that becomes more contagious. And um, and he's grown. I think you know he's talked about it. He's grown a lot there. But we have to we have to continue to grow over this next month. If we stop growing on the defensive side of the ball, it's gonna you know that'll that'll affect us for sure. I got you. One other thing. Um, I feel like I've read this, but I'm getting old. I forget stuff. Does it seem odd to you? I think there's been more delays, postponement, cancellations for you this year than there was last. And we're four shots and two boosters and whatever else into this process. Am I correct in that? Maybe the esteemed panel will correct me if I'm wrong on that. But um, you've had a lot of, as Colin was talking about, stops and starts. Yeah, it's last year, going into last year's season, you anticipated Right. Like I think we all did. We anticipated missing, you know, multiple games. Um, right. and we were really fortunate last year. And this year, I think with kind of as things have progressed, you know, from a medical standpoint and, and, and not having to test like we had to test and go through all that stuff last year, you know, we just assumed we wouldn't be facing as many interruptions. Um, but, you know, call it unlucky, you know, whatever, whatever it is, it's, it's certainly taken us out of rhythm. I think yep. There's no question about that. Um, but that's 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 reality right now. You know, I think we've just had to continue to fight. Every time we've gone through a pause like this, we've had to continue to fight to get to build back up that rhythm. And you know, call me optimistic, but I think the one thing is is we we certainly haven't peaked yet. You know, and, and part of these breaks have have have, have helped with that. But the great thing is, is we're going to have a lot of games here in a short amount of time that, um, mm -hmm. you know, it gives us an opportunity to get our rhythm at the right time.
Perfect. Thank you. All right. I got time for one each for Steve Hellwagon and Tim Hall. Steve. Yeah. Uh, Jake, I'll just uh, ask about Malachi Branham as I uh, was uh, checking his numbers here. He's up 12% shooting since the start of Big Ten again in January and up almost 10 points a game since the uh, start of uh, resumption of Big Ten play in January. And obviously we know that first game with Nebraska kind of skews the numbers a little bit. But what in general, I mean, he's coming off a game where he had 20 and seven against Purdue. Just what in general has uh, has he been able to do here in the last month to, to take things to a, to a little higher level, I guess? Yes, yeah, Steve, Malachi has been, he's been really good certainly one of the best freshmen in the league. And I think the hard work that he's put in since he's got to Ohio State, and, and listen, as all freshmen have to understand, you know, what you thought was hard, right? Before, when you're in high school and the time you thought you were spending was enough, it it's a different level here. And, and it's one of the reasons why our development, you look back since coach has been at Ohio State and you look at the way guys have developed, you know, there's, there's no, it's not an accident or coincidence that there's been this consistent development with guys. Um, and Malachi has bought in to, you know, working extra every day. And while he's working extra, working at a higher pace, higher intensity, more game quality reps. And I think we're seeing the benefit of that, you know, and, and he's been doing that now for, for a couple, two and three months. And like, the reality is like you have a really good workout that doesn't guarantee you going the next game and having a really good game. And you have to stack good days. And that's what I think he's bought into is keep coming every day, extra work game, you know, and now he's starting to see more consistent benefits of that. Um, but he deserves all the credit. He lives in the gym. He's finally, you know, I think he's finally starting to reap the benefits of his work and, um, you know, we're, we're, we need his consistency. I think there's no question about that. We need him to continue to, to be consistent, um, a consistent score for us. Cause when, when he is, it, um, it certainly helps us offensively and makes us more dynamic. Thank you. Good luck. Let me Thanks, Steve. <clears throat> hey, Jake, hope you're doing well. I was, I was wondering, I bet you're a guy that probably thinks of, rebounding as a continuation of your defensive effort right and just wondering what you think right now about your overall rebounding numbers and just real quick I'm sure you had to think it was cool to see Darius Garland get the all-star nod yeah th thanks Tim I uh so I was actually watching film and my wife kind of hit me it's like I think Darius was an all-star so we FaceTimed him right away. It was probably about 20 or 30 minutes after it, uh, the news came out and he was so excited. I, I've, it's been awesome to see how Cleveland has just kind of like put their arms around him and, and he's embraced, you know, being, being a Cav and, and obviously they're having a great year. And I think he's a big part of that. But as a, at, when you coach someone and you talk about in the recruiting process goals and, and things and you know he was the type of guy like we literally talked every day and and we've stayed obviously in contact since since he's gone on to the nba and and so it's just like it brings joy to your heart it makes you so proud to see someone work as hard as he works to uh to achieve that level this early in his career and i think he's just getting started i mean i think he's a special player so here in ohio i think we're lucky to have him uh i don't know how many Cavs fans we got on here but but I think it's great to have him. So that was awesome. Thank, thanks. Yeah, he was he was super excited. But um, rebounding is certainly a big part of our defensive side. Like we have to, you know, speaking to that consistency that I mentioned earlier, we have to be more consistent on the glass. And I think the games, if you look at our defensive numbers, the games when our when our rebounding percentage holding teams to one shot is is low, we're pretty we're pretty efficient defensively. When we give teams, and and we were obviously really bad against Purdue on the glass. Um, but when we give teams, you know, that many second chance opportunities, that's, that's certainly going to impact our defensive numbers. And, and so we work on it every day. Um, it's something we talk about. It's something there, there's certainly things you can do from a technical standpoint to, to help with that. And I think we're getting, we're starting to get a little bit better, but again, that consistency thing, 
you know, and there's an attention to detail required on the glass that if we do that, it'll, it'll certainly help us defensively. It's directly tied for sure. Big part of our defensive numbers. And we know um, we weren't great at that early in the season. We had gotten much better there for a stretch. We've kind of regressed a little bit at times over the last couple, couple weeks. Uh, but I think, I think that's an area that if we'll continue to grow and buy into, we're, it's going to really help us. All right, Jake, thank you. Hey, thanks, guys. Have a, have a good day. Stay warm and, and stay out of the snow. Thank you, Jake. We'll, thanks, Jake. Hopefully we'll see you, uh, thanks, see you in the shot tomorrow. Hope to see nice. you tomorrow, thanks. exactly.